Hello, and welcome back to Bookish. I thought the first thing I would do is a book review, and the, I thought the best thing to do would be to review the book I just finished reading. Uh, and the book that I just finished reading is called La Rose by Louise Erdrich. So I thought I'd come on here and talk about uh, the book, uh, talk about Louise Erdrich a little bit as an author, talk about my reading experiences with reading uh, Erdrich's books. This is actually the second book by Louise Erdrich uh, that I've read. I've also read The Roundhouse. I read that about a year ago, and, and I really liked it, and I found Erdrich's writing uh, to be really powerful, and her stories to be intricate um, and interesting and really multi-layered. The same thing was true uh, about La Rose. One thing about Erdrich that you need to know up front, if you don't know anything about her, is that um, Erdrich is part Native American, and at least the two books that I've read are all set kind of on Native American reservations or on kind of the border, kind of the gray area between Native American reservations, state government, United States government, county government, all kinds of things like that. And, you know, if you wanted to, you could probably read the books, particularly The Roundhouse, you could probably read her books and, you know, just kind of get some idea about the politics of that kind of incredibly complex situation. But that, that's not one of those things that interests me tremendously. Uh, what I find more interesting is, and, and one of the things I thought when I read The Roundhouse and again when I read La Rose was, that the person she reminds me of the most, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the, you know, Colombian magical realist uh, writer, and you know, probably considered maybe one of the greatest writers of that genre. And what ties the two together is this kind of blending of what I'm going to call European-American culture with a much older indigenous kind of culture of the Americas, in the case of Louise Erdrich, that's Native Americans, uh, Native American civilizations on the Northern Plains. It kind of then provides that same kind of backdrop uh, to the stories. There's always this blending together um, of Native American culture and American culture. There's always this kind of blending of you know, religious thought from the Western canon and Native American religious rituals and religious ideas and thoughts. And to me, that's much more interesting maybe uh, than the politics uh, of all those things. So one of the things you have to accept if you're going to read a book by Louise Erdrich, and again, I've only read two, but one of the things I think you have to accept if you're going to read a book by Erdrich is that she is going to blend the spiritual, fantastic world together with the real world seamlessly. Uh, and she's not going to make a real separation between those two things. Um, there's always a little bit of, you know, kind of text that allows you to realize that she is talking about the spiritual world or something spiritual. Uh, but from that, once that's done, you just kind of have to accept that the spiritual world and the real world coexist um, and that they affect and the spiritual world has some effect on the lives of people living in more or less... Uh, the modern United States. I really like Erdrich as a writer. Her prose, I think, is very fluid. Her storytelling is well-paced. Uh, her plots come together um, in really interesting ways. Now I want to talk about uh, the plot uh, of La Rose. So the plot centers around a tragedy, and that tragedy impacts two families that are loosely related uh, by blood and also by friendship and they kind of metaphorically live in two different worlds. That kind of metaphorical divide is made up by a really thick stand of trees and woods through which characters pass back and forth almost like a membrane between one world and the other. So one of the families is the family of Peter and Nola. Peter is a white man uh, and he married Nola uh, who is of Native American heritage. They have a daughter named Maggie, uh, who is in her preteen years at the beginning of the book, and they have a son named Dusty, who I think is five or six years old when the be book begins. They live on kind of the, the white world side because of Peter's heritage. But on the other side of those trees, on land that belongs to the other family, 
uh, because of ancient claims of land going back to colonial American frontier days um, on the Great Plains live Emmeline and Landrew. Emmeline and Landrew have a lot of kids. They have Snow, they have Josette, um, they have Hollis, they have a child who they call Coochie, um, that's a real name I don't remember, and they have their youngest son uh, is named LaRose. Those two families will be the two families most affected by the tragedy that takes place, and of all the people in those families, it's LaRose who has to kind of exist in, in both worlds, uh, more or less. He has to try to create that bridge across that divide, that membrane, between the family of Peter and Nola and the family of Emmeline uh, and Landrew. There are a lot of characters. I don't know if you picked up on that, but I already mentioned, what was that, at least nine characters? Um, these are already a lot of characters. On top of that, there are other characters who play kind of key roles in the story. Probably of those, the most important is a Native American man um, named, La named Romeo. By the way, if I didn't make this clear before, both Emmeline and Landrew and their family are Native Americans. And Emmeline in particular's family has lived on the piece of land where she and, and Landrew live and raise their family since, you know, at the very least, uh, maybe the early 1800s. Uh, and that plays, and that kind of heritage plays a really big part in the story. But anyway, let me get, get back to Romeo. Romeo is a childhood friend of Landrew. He's uh, Native American as well. Uh, he's kind of a down as luck, down and outer, who has some serious addiction problems. When we first meet him, he doesn't have a job, he more or less runs scams and panhandles and finds a way to cheat people out of money uh, and to just barely get by. Um, and he has a grudge against his old friend Landrew, which is made more complicated by the fact that Hollis, who is one of the children in Landrew and Emmeline's, Emmeline's house, is actually Romeo's son with a woman who has nothing to do with the story. Landrew is raising Romeo's son, Hollis, and that creates, you know, another level of complication. On top of that, when they were kids, both Landrew and Romeo were in love with Emmeline, and Landrew ends up marrying Emmeline. And he plays kind of a, an important role plot-wise in kind of moving the, the story on to uh, its climax, uh, which I, I won't give away, but he plays a really important role and is kind of an, uh, an interesting character as well. There's also Emmeline's family history, which is made up of, I believe, five La Roses, including her own son. Now, Emmeline's not named La Rose, but her mother was. Her mother is Mrs. Peace, who in the book uh, lives in a nursing home uh, for Native Americans, and she is uh, kind of a character who brings you know, she's the reason why uh, Romeo and Landrew and Emmeline all end up together because she used to be a teacher on one of the reservation schools. Um, and she plays an important role in the education of her grandson, LaRose, uh, as well. There's also Father Travis. He's a Catholic priest. And by the way, Father Travis is in the Roundhouse as well. He's a Catholic priest. He's a former U.S. Marine. He's scarred physically. He's obviously scarred emotionally and he's become a priest. He's a very popular priest who has all kinds of questions about his own faith. He has all kinds of questions about right and wrong. And come to find out, he's also in love with one of the main female characters in the book, or that love that he has eventually causes him to leave the reservation. There are also a number of other Native American characters who appear uh, to introduce cultural items, to educate uh, LaRose, and, as well as Emmeline and Landry's other kids who are, who clearly Emmeline and Landry believe preserving the culture of their people is a very important thing and they instill those values and those rituals and those beliefs. They practice those things and they teach their kids those things and part of that is done through Mrs. Peace who I believe is the fourth LaRose, um, which then brings me to the issue also talking about the first LaRose. So the first LaRose was a Native American woman who was sold to an American, an American trapper who had a business in the Dakotas. Uh, she was sold to him, became a slave. He rapes her. His clerk, who was of French descent, um, she, the first LaRose and this man uh, who's bought her and raped her, 
his clerk, they murder uh, her, I'm going to call him owner for lack of a better term, and they escape. Uh, they go through all kinds of hardships, all kinds of spiritual travails. Eventually they reach safety, and that first LaRose is the first LaRose, or the first member of her family, to go to a boarding school. And I'll talk more about the importance of Native American boarding schools when I get to other parts of the story. The thing you need to know, and to me, the most important character uh, in the book is LaRose, the young boy LaRose, the fifth LaRose. He is the person who everyone seems to turn to for some kind of comfort, who everyone ends up having some of their problems resolved, or almost everyone has some of their problems resolved by LaRose, which is a remarkable thing uh, for a boy kind of thrust in the midst of a tragedy to have to deal with. Um, he is consolation to Nola after the tragedy. Um, he is someone for his, for Maggie, Nola's daughter, to love uh, and to receive love from uh, unconditionally. He is the favorite child of Emmeline and Landry. He is the favorite in their family. All of the Emmeline and Landry's kids love him. All the older Native Americans in the book love LaRose, and they teach him, and they listen to him, and they are impressed by him. LaRose seems to have knowledge way beyond his years and wisdom that you don't get at the age of five, six, seven, eight, or nine uh, normally. And he's able to, in some ways, kind of then be the thing that heals um, a lot of the divisions that exist in the novel and a lot of the divisions that exist between the families of Peter and Nola uh, and the family of uh, Landry and Emmeline. Part of what allows him to do this is that LaRose is able to contact and communicate with the spirit world. This is something all LaRoses had been able to do. We find out early on that young LaRose, uh, the little boy LaRose, who's the title character of the book, can do the same thing. And he can receive counsel from them, and he can get, gain empathy from them, and he learns from them. He's also able to do what all other LaRoses have been able to do, and that is actually have his spirit leave his body. Uh, he can do this for protection. He can do this to gain insight. He can do this just to remove himself from a situation and to understand it better. That's kind of the, the plot which involves this tragedy involving those two families, Peter and Nola's family and Emmeline and Landry's family. LaRose is in the middle of that situation and he's essentially going to solve a lot of people's problems. Uh, even though, I have to be honest with you, the plot of the story is not about him kind of systematically solving problems. You don't even really realize that that's really what LaRose is doing until you get to kind of the climactic scene at the end of the book. And I think that's really one of the most deft and clever things that Erdrich does in the entire novel. So not only does this novel have a lot of characters and an underlying theme, and it also introduces all kinds of other stuff, almost like very subtly educating about things. Um, it, one of the kind of secondary themes is the theme of addiction. It deals frankly with the fact that many of the Native American men who are in the book are addicted. Uh, they're alcoholics, they're addicted to prescription painkillers. So it deals with the issue of addiction. It deals with the issue of um, sexual violence against women, which by the way uh, the Roundhouse is really about. It deals with the commonality of sexual violence against Native American women. It deals with, and it talks a lot about the issue of boarding schools and how boarding schools took on um, this, this role of, as many people probably know, of essentially trying to destroy Native American culture by turning, by turning young Native Americans into citizens of the United States of Americans and in the process, leaving behind that, their um, their cultures. Almost all of the characters in the book spent some time in Native American boarding schools, including the very first La Rose a long time ago, including Landrew, including uh, Romeo, and so it kind of deals with that issue of 
kind of the destruction of Native American culture in what I think is a really e interesting way. And it also focuses on the importance of community. One of the things you figure out when you read in the book is that almost everybody in the book is related to or knows somebody or is the cousin of somebody or works for somebody or worked for somebody and they're all connected. There's this huge community and it's that community which ends up providing, I think, the kind of the symbol of the healing that takes place at the end of the novel. At the end of the novel, this, this tragedy and all the divisions created and all the tensions created between the two families and all the problems Romeo has created uh, that propel the action of the book forward all come to a, to a climactic scene in which Rome, in which LaRose plays a key role even though he's not actually in the scene himself. And this, I think, is key to understanding LaRose as a character in the book. And in the end, while not all is forgiven, and while not all the pain and suffering of the characters is healed, they are able to come together, all of them, who are connected to this Native American family of which LaRose is a part. They all come together at Hollis's high school graduation and have a big feast and they're all able to coexist. And like I said, it's not, you know, a happily ever after. There are clearly tensions there. There are problems that are left completely unresolved. And in that way, it, it's very realistic. This idea that there can be complete forgiveness uh, and that people won't remember uh, the things that you did or that happened in the past that hurt them. You know, that that's kind of a fairy tale world. And this is not a fairy tale. La Rose is grounded in the reality of human relationships. So I think La Rose is an amazing book and I continue to be impressed with Louise Erdrich. She is a great writer, a great thematic writer without hammering you over the head with it, able to pull all these strands of plot together uh, into a conclusion that feels real, into a situation where, where by the time you get into the book you understand what's happened and you understand that you know, not everything has been resolved and that not everything is going to be perfect. The writing is clear, uh, the pacing is good. It is a complex story. It can be confusing. Sometimes it shifts back and forth in time. Um, sometimes there are scenes that are introduced and information given that you don't understand the importance of until later. But you know, to me, that those are elements of a good book and elements of a good storytelling author is the ability to bring those things together. And while I'm not trying to, to uh, denigrate Erdrich's ability as a writer doing the technical work of writing great sentences and paragraphs and all those kinds of things, I think it's her ability to create these complex stories, um, these realistic characters, even though they deal with the fantastic spirit world, and to bring that all together in the end in a way which feels real. Uh, so I really liked uh, La Rose, and you know I would encourage anybody who's thinking of picking up a book by Louise Erdrich that this is not a bad place to start. The Roundhouse is also a good book, and I think chronologically The Roundhouse comes before. Um, I know it comes before La Rose chronologically, and you might want to pick that up. Let me encourage you to go out and buy Louise Erdrich books, read Louise Erdrich books. I intend to read more. That's my evaluation of La Rose. Thank you for watching.